When we talk about critical thinking, um, we want uh, individuals who are going to be able to think critically and kind of really think outside the box. And when we, when we talk about that critical thinking, it's not just from their perspective of it, but it's also from the client. Because uh, I am a consultant and that's what they're hired to do is be consultants, they really need to have that process down. And you need to communicate that. That's another one of the C's is the communication. How does that communication come out when you're critically thinking? Because a lot of us are technical folks, but we need to be able to process that and communicate that so it's, it's easily consumed by someone else who may not be a non-technical person or even if they are a technical person. You just have to be able to read the audience when you're doing that. Um, another piece that has collaboration. You have to collaborate with people. Um, and just because you're technical doesn't mean that you know everything. Um, and you shouldn't assume that. And collaboration amongst um, areas where you don't know is crucial, it's crucial, um, especially when you're working with different organizations and kind of pulling them together. We found that a lot of organizations, they don't know how to collaborate amongst each other, so they always work in a silo. So we always come in with that approach of collaboration from that standpoint. One of the questions that we do ask the um, asked uh, employees when they're coming on board is culture. What culture are they looking for? And when we talk about culture, meaning work-life balance, um, is that a culture of learning? Is it a culture of fun atmosphere? Because just because you're working for a paycheck doesn't necessarily mean you have to be serious all the time. Everyone likes to have fun and they like to have fun doing what they like to do. I think cybersecurity is a is a niche that's out there and folks there's no gray area really it's it's really black and white when you really boil it down it's either you have it or you don't have it and security is something that some people take for granted they just figure when you talk about security in a cyber space you're talking about passwords and you're talking about things of that nature it goes a little bit more than that and you can dig a little bit deeper than that you got to have policies you got to have governance you have to have the technology and most importantly you have to have the people that are passionate about the area of security that they want to be in so it's really that active piece of what individual do you like to have on your team that's able to do that it is a team sport it is a collaboration sport so and when i say collaboration not just from the cyber folks uh, that you're working with but it's also the other folks that are out there the business leaders the stakeholders um, the other it folks hr it's all of those people that play a role in it and getting them to understand that you it's cyber security is not like it used to be you don't run around with a disc and put antivirus on everybody's computer that's what everybody thinks it's 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 more advanced than that now so it's about training and understanding why am I doing this phishing campaign? It's important because these are things that we take out in the real world from our personal standpoint. It, it is um, important for them to understand the crux of the technology. And when I say that, I mean it's more of a high level view of the technology. They don't have to understand every piece of the technology because that's not what they're designed. That's not what their role is. But they need to understand the technology enough from a high level to be able to write the policy to apply that um, and that technology. So cutting edge technology is technology that's out there um, that's new new or improved technology. So let's give an example, like a SIM tool, um, a security information and monitoring tool that's out there. Mm -hmm. That tool has been out there forever, um, but there's different kinds of tools that are out there. And depending on what kind of tool you get, there may be a new company that's formed and they are on the bleeding edge. So they've created this brand new tool with this brand new technology goes with that tool. Is a SIM tool new? It's not. The process and procedure and the version and the technology that they're using to implement it is. That would be the bleeding edge of that because we don't know what all the, the bugs are going to be with that system. We don't know if the application is going to work correctly. We don't know if it's going to work in our environment, how it's going to play a role in that environment that you're in. It may work good for healthcare, but it may not work good for financial. So that's what we mean when we talk about the bleeding edge side of the house. When we talk about the cutting edge, 
we can take a SIM tool that we know is good. They've been in the market for a long time. We know that they work in healthcare, financial. So it doesn't matter which environment they're in. They are using their technology and they've already expanded that environment already. Say, how do you land that first job in cybersecurity? What's really important though is having a certification. People say it's not important, but I have found that certifications are important, but I caution people when they take certifications. Know the certification. There are some people that are really good at test taking. They're just really good at test taking. Me, unfortunately, I'm not good at test taking. Can I take certifications? Absolutely, I can. Personally, I don't ask everyone to go out there and have a lab or have your own lab, but most folks that are in the realm that I'm doing or in the IT field, they do have a lab. They have a lab um, at their home or somewhere where they can practice. And I think that's a great thing to do because then you can really see what is it that you really like. Do you like identity access management? Do you like firewalls better? Do you like cloud version? Do you like on-premise version? Do you like a mix of both? Do you like Azure? Do you like AWS? It does matter. And I will say that um, I'm one of the rare folks that wakes up every morning and loves my job. Um, and I love security because it's a challenge every day. It's absolutely a challenge every day. And some days are frustrating, but know that you're making a difference. Pick competitions that are gonna be relevant to what you want to do and how you want to do that. For example, if you're someone who's a DevOps, a DevSecOps person, meaning you like to do a lot of coding in your DevOps, absolutely, Black Hat every year has DEF CON. Um, and it's a huge um, one day event that it's really like a hackathon. And you read some really smart people. And I'm talking about, when I say smart people, these are people that help defend the network for, for the White House, for the Pentagon, um, for huge enterprise organizations. And they don't mind sharing their thought process and how they got to where they got to uh, with you. So it's not a matter of winning or losing the competition. It's a matter of gaining that experience. And that's the important portion of it. And did you have fun doing it? Did you collaborate? Did you learn anything new? Did you try something new? Um, I, I have tried a hackathon a couple times. It just wasn't my cup of tea um, to do that, but I will tell you that I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just the people that I got to meet, and that's why I say there are some smart folks, um, really smart, and sometimes they can make you feel like you're dumb, but they are really some smart folks, and you can always tap them on the shoulder, and they're always willing to give that information up. We look for people who are gonna be those critical thinkers and, and the ones who are gonna do the research and the ones who are gonna to come to you with the, the problem and the solution and everything they've done from their experience and what they've researched and their knowledge and they've just run out. That's why they're coming to you who's a senior person and asking that. And I will tell you that it pays off. It pays off hugely and I've done that in my career and it's, it has benefited me a lot. Um, and that's one of the things that we look at for somebody who's breaking into that. <clears throat> we don't necessarily, and I will tell you in many of the interviews that I've done, I can tell when someone is just reading off their paper. Even when we're on camera, I can tell when they're just reading off paper or when they've practiced and polished their resume so much that they know what their resume is. And so that's why most organizations now do scenario-based questions. And so I usually do scenario-based questions. There is no script, there isn't anything. And I usually show the, <clears throat> the interviewee that I don't have a script. I'm not reading off a script. I'm solely making all of it up as I go based off my experience. And